to New Hampshire Unscripted with your host, Ray Dudley. Hi, Katie. Hi. How are you? Good, good. Good to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you for doing this. Oh, it's my pleasure. I am so intrigued. I can't wait. <laughs> so let's let's start from your invitation to join sure. White, White Rabbit, Red Rabbit. What was it like when you got it? Did you know sure. anything about the play and, and go from there? Yeah. So I knew what the play was. Obviously, I didn't know the content of the play. Nobody does. Right. Um, but I knew the, the concept. Um, because in the summer of 2019, I did a play called Bakersfield Mist at the Hatbox with Peter Josephson. And Peter had just prior to that done White Rabbit, Red Rabbit for New Hampshire Theater Project. Okay. Um, of course, he couldn't tell me anything about it, except that it was an incredible experience. And he said, if you ever get the chance to do it, do it. Uh, when Wayland reached out to me, I texted Peter and I said, I have the chance. Do you think I can do this? And he said, yes, you need to do it. It will be very different. And you, you have this in you. So, um, so I said, yes. And I sort of forgot about it because it was sort of a ways away yeah. um, when Wayland asked me and then the pandemic hit and then it became further away and further away and further away. So by the time I actually did the show, it had been, almost two years, I think, wow. since Waylon had first reached out to me. What were your feelings before going into it? When when you were offered it, and you kind of know what you're not going to be able to do or not know. Um, were you nervous? Did, did What kind of thoughts yeah. did you have about yeah. it? Yeah, so I was nervous. But then it's funny, I was talking to Deirdre Bridge, who was also one of the actors. And I said, I'm nervous. Are you nervous? And she said, you know, I get, what can you do? You can't prepare. And we're used to, you and I and Deidre and all of our colleagues in this community are used to preparing, right. you know, figuring your character out. What did they eat for breakfast? How did they walk? Did they pull their wallet out with their left hand or their right hand? You know, all of those things that you do to build a character that you couldn't do. Mm -hmm. So I was nervous, but also sort of in some ways I knew the audience was going to be understanding because yeah. they knew I'd never seen this before. And I also knew the audience couldn't talk about it. So if I was terrible, nobody would know. Uh, I, <laughs> I mean, if I was great, nobody would know either, <laughs> but I figured, well, it's this one night. And if I really blow it, it's between me and however many people decide to come see me and nobody will really ever know, but me, but I got nervous that day. Yeah. Like that day I got nervous. Is there any way to prepare? I mean, you, you almost can't, I, I hate to ask the question because yeah. I kind of know what the answer is, but how do you prepare for a play that you don't even get right. to walk on stage? Right. So one of my go-tos as an actor is always music. For every show I do, for weeks and weeks before the show, I'm finding songs, curating songs that either remind me of the character, remind me of the story, or evoke some kind of emotion in me that start to, I respond to music, um, to lyrics very deeply. So every show I've done, wit, Death of a Salesman, Bakersfield Mist, even California Sweet. I have playlists in my phone named for those shows because it's music that I, I put in the car when I drive to rehearsals or the performances, and I've got it in my ears before I do a show. And so I thought, well, I can't create a playlist for this character because I don't know what this character is or if it's one character or 100 characters or no characters. I had no idea. And so... I put a playlist together of songs that were a combination of kind of pump me up anthems, like you can do this 
Um, I put fun things on it. Like I put white rabbit on it by Jefferson airplane. Cause of course, nice. um, I put a song called into the unknown on there from frozen Two of all things, because I was going into the unknown, but then I also put on some songs that for me kind of center me and ground me and make whatever emotions I need kind of pretty easy to tap into. And I didn't know what emotions I was going to need or not need. Right. But I figured it couldn't hurt. So I um, walked up and down that back quarter at the hat box with my earbuds in for about 15 minutes. And I did some stretches and, you know, jumped up and down a lot. And then I just went into the dressing room and I kept my music in and I just sat Oof. and I tried to be kind of still, yeah. um, which was hard because people wanted to keep checking on me. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you need anything? I was like, I need you to not check on me. Is what I need. You to do. <laughs> um, but that's all I did because I, you know, what else can you do? I will say that it it helped for mm -hmm. me. It helped, and it sort of it helped kind of center me where I needed to be. Was there any pre-show? I know Whalen couldn't give you direction, but did you did you all like meet at one point and just have a discussion about the night or or? Anything? No, um, I will tell you that the actor receives an email from the playwright you do. 48 hours before. You do? Yes. Um, well, the producer does. And then I cannot tell you what is in that email. Of course. Um, it's maybe the shortest <laughs> interview ever. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can tell you the email was very helpful. Um, the email gave nothing away about the show. Okay. I still had zero idea what I was walking into but it helped me understand things the playwright felt were important. So he did that well without giving you a single clue to what the plot My or goodness. the context of the show was. So that was helpful. Um, but we did not talk about it as a group beforehand. Um, Wayland was fantastic. I mean, Wayland really checked in on us kind of every week. Do you have questions? Like, for example, I love to be barefoot when I rehearse and when I perform. If I could do every show barefoot, I'd be in heaven. It's just my favorite thing. It really grounds me. I always feel very sort of rooted. And so I did call him that morning and I said, I know nothing about the set or lack of a set or if there is a set. I don't know any of this is there any reason I can't be barefoot? And he said, no, you can be barefoot. It's fine. It's safe. So, so he was able to help us yeah. uh, with questions we had to the extent that he was able to, without giving anything away. <laughs> um, I will tell you one thing that we have talked a lot as a group after the fact. I was going to get to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you can bring that up now if you want. Um, I'm, I'm very curious. As I drink my wine, it's been a long day. Steve LaJoy, who was the first actor to go, started, and I will say this is an incredible group of actors and people, many of whom I knew, many of whom I didn't know. And every weekend there would be an email of, you know, break legs, you've got this to, to the people that were about to go. Um, Eric Skoglin was great at that, actually. Every, before, every performance, he would send that email out. And But Steve started an email chain for, um, and he would add you to it after you had performed. And so it sort of gave us all a place to share yeah. notes and reactions to it, which was really helpful because I will tell you, I think I can say this when the show was over and I was, you know, outside the hat box with my family, I said to my wife, I'm not sure what just happened. <laughs> yeah. So having that email chain gave us a place to kind of talk about it. I cannot imagine. I mean, I really cannot. There's, Waylon had said that, and Lacey said, you know, there's no right or wrong. And, and yet, how do you know if you've, if you've pulled off what you needed to pull off, if there I is think even such a thing? Well, I think that's the, the sort of gift of this piece is there is no right or wrong. And everybody is really different. And I think it's easy as actors, we're hard on ourselves. And so my first reaction in sort of reading other people's experiences was like, oh, I didn't do that. Or I didn't think of it that way. And to think, oh, I was wrong. I didn't get it right. Yeah. But I think once you kind of, if you give yourself the gift of allowing for that, there's no wrong or right. And the way you did it was the right way to do it for you. Um, then it's, you know, you're, it is what it is. That's crazy when you think of it. That, it is. I, that, I, I will say, you know, what really helped me 
Um, I didn't expect there to be as many people there as there were. That threw me. Um, I was sort of like, oh, you know, 10 people are going to come see me, whatever. It's going to be fine. I was a little thrown by how many people were there and people I didn't expect to see there. Um, and they're right there and the lights are kind of up so you can see, be part of this. But as we were driving to the theater that night, my wife said to me as a joke, because she's very sarcastic, you know, she says, you know, we're just, we're taking this journey with you. And she was being kind of a wise ass, but she was right. And without knowing it, without I mean, knowing it. And so I think for me, the whole process felt the entire thing felt like something the audience and I did together. We went through it together and I don't feel like I performed. I don't feel like I necessarily was an actor, but I feel like I was a guide through this for the audience. And we, got through it together. And I think I can say that without giving anything away. Yes. Okay. Um, this is a very interesting dynamic. So I want to go back just a little bit, because I really want to kind of get into what your head's doing when you're on stage, even without giving anything away. Prior to, I know you had your headset on, but prior to, as an actor, I'm trying to wrap my head around what, what's going on. You know, normally we're just running lines, lines, lines. Right. We can hear the audience out there. Right. We get a feel for what kind of a night it might be. Are they have they been out eating and drinking? Is it going to be a great night? Are they quiet? You know, right? Um, and you know what the piece should be. Now you're you're sitting backstage. You don't know what the set looks like. You don't know what the play's about. You don't know what the audience is going to react to because they have never seen it. We think uh, most of them probably hadn't. You pull your headset off. What happens then? How, how how deep of a breath did you take? How fast was your heartbeat? I mean, what's yeah. going on? So um, it was breathing pretty fast. <laughs> um, I was walked to the set and given the script and the piece started. Oh, stop right there. Yeah. So you walk out. You sit. When you were you behind anything? Did or could you? Just I was walk? just over. I was over by the dressing room. I didn't see the set till I walked onto the stage. Okay. And I will be honest. I didn't notice like chunks of the set until like two thirds of the way through the show. Is like, that, I, I was, was that okay? Because you're in the I moment. Just, yeah, I was nervous. My wife said she could tell I was nervous. Yeah. You know, How could you not be? You, you would have to be. I will tell you. I got two pieces of advice from Peter. And if he ever watches this, he'll say, oh, no, but it, it, he really helped me. And his advice was, when you get the script, take a beat mm. and breathe. And then start. You know, your impulse is, okay, I got it. I got to start. And he's just to take that moment and breathe. Yeah. Um, I've done uh, some training with Theater Kapow. I've done some work with Theater Kapow. And Breath is very, very central to their work. And every time I work with them, I'm reminded again of how important breath is. And so I appreciated that reminder from Peter to breathe. And I had a water bottle with me on stage. Uh, I tend, my mouth tends to get very dry when I'm nervous. Yeah. And when I found myself starting to feel like things were getting away from me, I stopped and I took a drink and I took a breath. Because again, I figured nobody said I couldn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah, know, so. right. And the other thing Peter told me, which I really took to heart was whatever emotion you feel as you move through the piece, sadness, anger, grief, laughter, joy, whatever that emotion is, tap into it and let it happen. That the piece said the piece asks for your honesty. And I really tried to take that to heart. I don't know if I succeeded or not. The audience would have to tell you that, but I tried to yeah. sort of take that to heart. Um, those two pieces of advice helped me tremendously <laughs> in, in doing this. Okay. You come out of the dressing room, you immediately, <laughs> uh, Waylon had said the, the, the audience lights stayed up or were yeah. still on. So mm -hmm. now you can see everyone. Mm -hmm. Now you see the set. Mm -hmm. Does someone hand you the script or is it there? Yes. Okay. No, they hand it to me. It's in a sealed envelope. Okay. Did you pause and look around before you open it? I mean, I cannot, is this 
Can you do anything you want prior you, to opening it? I mean, you can, I guess. I mean, I opened it right away. I did. I saw some people right away, others. And remember, everyone is masked. We're still in a pandemic. Right. So there were people who were there who commented to me later about seeing it that I had no idea were there uh -huh. because of where they were sitting and the fact that they were masked. There were people who were there who I knew they were there right away. And some people whose presence was incredibly comforting. Like I just had, I had, you know, my wife was there. My, one of my best friends was with her. Um, my friend, my dear, dear friend, Vicki Sandin, who's directed me many times was there. I had some people from my work who had come. I had trustees from my board. I had other friends. So there were people who were there that I felt, and Peter was there right in the front in a place where I felt. No pressure. Kind of. You know, it's interesting. I didn't feel pressure. I really felt kind of like I had a safety net, these people. Kudos, first of all. <laughs> well, because what's ha what's about to happen on set, on stage, is the audience is about to watch an actor in their element creating, literally on the fly. They are watching what we normally take eight weeks or so to do mm -hmm. two weeks in a professional setting, but still it's eight hours a day. Mm -hmm. uh, you are trying not to compress into 70 minutes and they are watching a skilled professional do right. This is, yeah, you're well, come on, <laughs> take the kudos. Um, <laughs> and they are going to watch you disassemble and reassemble something on the fly immediately. It's like a magician. You're like a magic act. And at the same time, according to Wayland, at some point, the audience can get involved. I don't know anything yes. about it, but yes. um, they can get involved. Yes. And so you're like a master of ceremonies. At the same time, you're sculpting something yes. out of a raw material yes. and trying to come out with a final product that's your own, that's original, that could never, ever be done by anybody else. Yeah. Girl, I love you. This, <laughs> I, the, I can't, I just can't. You know, it I, fascinates me. I, can't, I have no other word for it. You know, it. like I said, the, the fact that no one will ever go out and talk about my performance gave me some freedom. I can fall or I can soar, mm. but it's going to stay in this room. I tried to be, you know, the hat box, they were on three sides. And yep. so I tried to be very cognizant of connecting with as much of the audience as I could throughout the piece of making eye contact with almost everybody. I, I really tried. And the, it, <sighs> We always, in any piece, we feed off of the audience and we feed off of their energy. I've never had a piece other than maybe wit where I talked to the audience directly for the entire play. I've never had a piece other than that where I got to do as much of this. And I love that. I mean, I really do love that. So that's really where I felt supported other than one gentleman who maybe was very tired and fell asleep. I've had I that happen. Very <laughs> it, you it know, happens. it's funny. Like, bless the hat box, but it's very conducive to, you know, all of a sudden the air conditioner thing will kick on or the heat, right. you know, and, you know, and the lights are on. It's very, and, or, or down, but yeah. it's always somebody who nods off because right. it, yeah. it's, it's very not conducive. the first time someone's fallen asleep in a show I've done. It won't be the last, I'm sure. Yeah, so, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've got the script. Is it a play or is it? Um, how do I put this? Uh, are you producing? So are you? I really. Okay. I you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's fine. Was there anything? And again, you don't have to get specific, but was there anything that tripped you up? It, well, it, during it that caught um, you off guard that you yes. were not ready? For? Yeah, there was. I can't tell you what it was, but I can yeah. tell you there was a subject matter that I didn't expect and that made me very emotional. Uh. And I just tried to listen to remember what Peter said and said, if this is making you emotional, then let it. And so there were two times I cried, uh, both caught me off guard, but it happened. And I don't know that I, I'm not saying every actor is going to cry in those parts. Right. We're all different. So that, that I just wasn't expecting. 
there's some physicality to it, which I wasn't expecting, which is sort of silly. And I, you know, I'm not, I mean, I am what I am, you know, I, I, I'm like New Hampshire's B. Arthur, you know, I'm not exactly, you know, a agile, live, young thing, you know? So there was, I, I, I jokingly had said to a couple of people beforehand, my biggest fear is I'm going to open this script and it's going to tell me to get down on the floor and then I'll never be able to get back up again. <laughs> so, you know, that didn't happen, but, but so there was some physicality to it that I was like, well, this isn't my strong suit, but I'll give it my co- good old college try. Yeah. There were some surprises for sure. I had done some research before my Whalen interview and, um, that happened a lot to a lot of people. There was not that they tripped, not that there was a tripping point, but that they got caught with an emotion. I think they weren't expecting mm-hmm. yeah, that yeah. it, the ride you're going along. If I understand correctly, I haven't seen it and I don't know anything about it, but, and, and for many people, cause we all come from different social, mm-hmm. spiritual, economic backgrounds. And so I imagine that there, based on what I had read, that there's something in <laughs> there that can bring out something. Yeah. And and I had read where uh one actor, I think it was a Broadway performance uh, off by where they're doing it, um just broke down and cried at the end. They they had given all that they had yeah. done, you know, they really Yeah. It was I did left. when it was over. I mean after it was over. Yeah. I, I did. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. I, I did for sure. Is it exhausting? I mean you're going yeah. for 70 minutes yeah. and, and all oh, of a sudden yeah. you know you come to the last page and right. Yeah, it is exhausting. Um, it's ex- but it, but it's also exhilarating too. I think if you were to talk to Eric, like Eric, I think had an amazing audience there that night. Eric's an incredibly energetic performer, and I think he was really exhilarated in a way. I was exhilarated, but I was also kind of wrung out because we're two really different actors. Yeah, right. And so I think that's the joy of this piece is who you are as an actor and as a person. I'm, I was okay. I've, I've played a bunch of roles where I've had to be fairly vulnerable. And so I was okay kind of tapping into that. Um, one of the things that I, I don't want to say it's a pet peeve because that's too harsh. I feel that sometimes I see it in actors. I see it a lot in younger women who haven't quite gotten into their skin yet in their twenties or early thirties that their emotions will stop. They only get so far to the audience and you, you want to just, you know, pull that open and get more out of them. What a great insight. And that comes with age and security and all sorts of things. I'm 55. I've lived a pretty interesting life. So I have the security to let myself be vulnerable Mm -hmm. that I think younger women may not. So I was okay showing whatever emotion I was going to show. I know other actors, and this is not a plus or a minus. I'm not saying I'm right and they're wrong. This is just yeah. how we approach our work. Um, other actors, I think, I think it's easy to show those emotions as a character, but to show them as yourself can be very scary. So this piece you're acting, but you're not, you're yourself, but you're not. There's, you know, there's a really interesting dynamic in Mm. this piece. So I respect actors who protected themselves and said, I'm not going to go there. You know, I respect that. And I respect actors who went further than I did um, in letting whatever emotion they're going to show come out. You know, I, I don't know. I've not seen anyone do it. I could have gone to see people who came after me. You didn't see any of them after you? I didn't. And I will tell you why. And there are people I loved. I mean, I had dear friends who went after me. I didn't because I kind of wanted to just keep it for me for this moment. This was this thing I did and this experience I had. And maybe if another company does it next year or two years, I'll be removed enough from it to go see someone else do it. But to go see someone do it, you know, two, three, four, five days later, I wasn't there yet. I needed to kind of just let it still be for me for hey, right that's now. That's incredible. That's incredible. So you ended up with this wonderful treasure, this yeah. gift yeah. that you, you were protecting. That's, that's very insightful again. 
I know that there are some people, and we don't have to mention any names, who struggled with the production, their performance, somewhere in their performance. That's all I, I know. Is this, is it because it requires a person to be vulnerable or, or, or is it? Yeah, then, I don't know. I don't know that it requires that. Yeah. I don't. I think there is a way to do this piece without, do, without going there. Yeah. I think I'm a type of person that tends to, to tap into that a little more, um, sometimes too much. Sometimes I wish I wasn't. Sometimes I wish I could, you know. So um, I, I don't think it is at all a requirement of this piece. I think there's ways to do this piece brilliantly without going there. Um, and I have no doubt, knowing the eight other actors that did this piece, that every one of them was brilliant. I am 100% sure. Yeah. They are actors I really respect, every single one of them. And and some I didn't know who I wish I could have seen, but they went before me. You know, Alex Picard, Chris, who's somebody I don't know. I would have loved to have seen her. I've, I've not seen Steve LaJoy do very, you know, I've only seen him do one or two things. I would have loved to have seen him. Eric, who's a dear, dear friend, I would have loved to have seen but they were before me. And so I have no doubt they were fantastic. So no, I think, I think, you know, we just, it's like any piece, you kind of come at it to where you are in your life too. And where I am in my life right now, and with things that have happened in my life in the past couple of years, there was a piece of this script that hit some nerves. So that's not going to happen for somebody else. And it's still going to be a fantastic performance. I mean, that is the beauty of it. It's there's yeah. no, there's no right. There's no wrong. It's interesting <laughs> yeah. that you talk about nine different people performing it and would end up doing it probably nine different ways. And yet, so the irony here, if it's maybe it's not irony, my point is that it can be done comically, dramatically, sensitively, you know, you've got comedians, you've got, comedians and comedians mm -hmm. and uh and then serious actors and and there were folks like aaron who or do improv and and deirdre who's done a one-woman play before mm -hmm. and you know you've got this wide variety of people who are going to see things differently they they all have yeah. a different and, and we've all been trained differently you know we've all gone through whatever training we've gone through you know, other than the fact that, you know, Deidre and I have done some Kapow training together. I haven't trained with any of these actors. So my training as an actor could be very different from Aaron's, from Eric's, from yeah. Steve's, you know, so we're all going to find, you know, I, I got trained as an actor 35 years ago. You know, there was a young actor who was just, you know, a few years out of college who did this piece. So his training is really fresh right now. So we're all going to sort of pull different tools out of our toolbox for it. What was the audience reaction at the end? You, you're done with it. You closed um, the book. So I I, yeah. So I can't really tell you exactly without giving away the end of the piece, but I will tell mm -hmm. you my eyes were closed. Lacey. And then because of COVID, the audience has to leave. There's no hanging around the theater. So Lacey told me, this is where you have to have family like my wife. Lacey told me that, I had gotten a standing ovation. I heard the applause. That was very nice to hear. I said that to my wife and she said, well, we all had to stand up to leave. So I don't know. <laughs> that's cruel. That's cruel. But you know, that's, <laughs> so uh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. Maybe they were just standing <laughs> up to get out of the theater. I don't know. Again, I felt um, just a tremendous amount of support and kind of love and we're with you from, from the audience. Could you feel them with you through the whole thing? hundred percent. You did. hundred percent. Yeah. 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 So they were buying into, were they sympathetic? Were they just curious? What do you think they were? I, I think, I think curious is a great way to, to say it. And it's hard, again, it's hard to tell because they were all masked. Yeah. So there was only so much I could see of their reactions. Yeah. Um, I heard laughter at things that I did that apparently were funny. Um, and I heard silence and I heard at one point they talked to me, but they were, I, I never felt like I didn't have them with me. I mean, I really felt like, Oh, we're in this together. That was kind of cool. Do you think that, that this, that there's people who should not do this or would you say, no, everyone, it, everyone should, if they get the chance. I mean, um, it's hard for me to say that without telling okay. you any okay. content. 
I think it's a great thing for any actor to do. I'll say what Peter said. I mean, you should do it. You'd be amazing. <laughs> You'd be amazing. I have a lot of act, and you know, I have a lot of actor friends who didn't come because of that, because they they do hope to do it someday, and I I hundred percent respect that. My daughter, I told my daughter not to come. She's twenty two. She's yeah. got a long acting career ahead of her. She might get the chance to do it someday. So yeah, I said no. I don't think you should come. You I know, and you I respect that. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I know you can't do it again, but would you do it again, knowing what? Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Yeah. What did it do for you? Did it do anything for you yourself? I mean, did it? Produce? Yeah. You know, I will say it's been a long couple of years, you know, and, you know, almost two years of pandemic life. And I'm at an age where there's not a ton of great roles that, you know, people aren't beating down my door for roles for 55 year old, freakishly tall, prematurely gray actors, you know, <laughs> If I look at one more casting call and the the woman is described as 30s and attractive, I'm going to throw something. There's not a lot from me. Mm. I'm not, I don't really want to just do silly farces. Um, I want to do things that mean something. I want to do things that are well written and are interesting and the characters are real people. And so for me, I'm at a point right now where I don't know what's coming down the pike. I don't know if I have a show coming or not. Mm -hmm. I may not. That may be the last thing I do. You know, it's, it's the whole landscape has changed because of the pandemic. And I also, it really reinforced to me that if I'm going to give up my time with my family, it's going to be something that's got to be good and really worth it. And so um, for me, I thought this could be the last time you're on stage for a long time or ever. I don't know. So it it kind of felt like I had nothing to lose, but it, it reminded me that I know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm trying to try to say that without sounding cocky. No, do it. But it reminded me that I I do know what I'm doing. Good. And I can do this. Good. Um, And that there's a place for me on stage still, hopefully that's not the last thing I do. <laughs> yeah, know? no, I, 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 yeah, but that's, I was really hope, glad you said that. I was hoping you'd say something along those lines because I cannot see how a responsible actor can go into a project like this and come out the other end, not having grown or feel now that they, they're more courageous. They, they feel braver. Yeah. They feel, you know, when I had done True, um, until True, I, I was enjoying parts, but I wasn't creating. And one thing that True did for me was it stopped me in my tracks. And I thought, you know, this is the kind of work I w- want, thought I was doing, but I hadn't until True. Right. And it, it made me really appreciate creating. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, the roles I did, it was just yeah. me just being a different face, you know? Yeah. I've always enjoyed rehearsal almost more than performing mm. because that's where the creating happens. Yes. The most where the work happens. So this was kind of like both at once. Yeah. <laughs> it was a read through, a run through, a tech week and a performance all in one night, you know? So, so I've always enjoyed that. I, I you know, I always sort of love just those times when it's just, you and the other actor or actors and, you know, these three chairs are standing in for our couch and, you know, this Mm -hmm. piece of paper is standing in for the tray or whatever it is, because that's when you're just stripped down to really creating. I've always liked that almost more than the performance. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I, I I think I've always called the rehearsal time uh, an adult playground because that's when, if you're smart, you'll use it to go on the, the merry-go-round, right. to use the slide, to do the jungle gym, and always looking to yeah. create, to add and subtract and keep trying different things, you know? Do I limp? Do I wink? Do I, right. you know, <laughs> whatever. Um, I cannot imagine trying to do that in 70 minutes with something <laughs> that you just got. That is a whole different story. Yeah, so no, no, I said kudos before, but I mean that. Thank I'm very you. proud of you. It, it, Thank that's, you. It's just so courageous. It's just well, so thank you. And and I got to thank Wayland for believing in me and asking me to do it. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say to somebody who 
may in the future get offered the chance. Oh, just do it. Oh, just do it. I'll say what Peter said, just do it, you know, because you'll never do anything like it again. Yeah. I can't believe you would. Yeah. It's a once in a lifetime thing. Yep. Right? And you can't be compared to anybody because it's nope. so unique. Right. So what do you got to lose? <laughs> yeah. It's like a painting. Yeah. You know, you can almost replicate the painting, but one stroke difference makes it a different painting. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, Katie, I love you. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. Well, is there anything else you wanted to say about it or anything that you can or? or no, you know? I just want to thank the players and Wayland and all the audiences and, and the other eight actors who just have, um, I really enjoyed all of our interactions. Mm. You know, we were never a company, but you know, the eight of us went, the nine of us went through yeah. this thing together and that's been really neat. Odd relationship, huh? Yeah. <laughs> that's just, that's crazy. Well, I want to thank you. I really do. Because uh, these are the discussions that, that I love. Oh, I'm so glad you did this. I really